and welcome to a new video. I hope that you are staying safe and healthy and in this video I am painting three feathers. Before starting the tutorial I'm going to quickly go over the materials. I am using my Winsor and Newton watercolour brushes, my Montmartre watercolour set, my medium sized Chinese brush, and my Canson 300 GSM Mixed Media Sketchbook. The first thing I did was to sketch out three curved lines to mark out the center line of the feather, which through a quick Google search found out is called the shaft. Then I gently rubbed it out so that it would be less noticeable. Then with a thin brush, I painted in the shaft the color I wanted the feather to be and painted in one half of the feather at a time. I start by cleaning my brush and adding water, making adjustments to how wide I want to make the feather, with the feather curving outwards in the middle and narrower at both ends. On the outer edge, I painted lightly the thin hairs poking out to give that feather appearance. And while the page is still wet, I added my colors. I didn't worry about the paint being even as I wanted the feather to be more textured and for the feather to be unique with its own look. When painting the other half, I made sure that I left a gap so there is a line in the center untouched to use the page to create contrast for where the shaft is. In my first attempt, I didn't do this step and didn't like it. I think that this step really helps the feather look like a feather. I added more paint closer to the shaft. At the quill, which is at the bottom of the shaft, I added some after feathers near the bottom. And then I was on to the next feather. I used the same shapes adding water to map out the shape I wanted and then added my colours. I preferred the shape of this feather and my third as I thought it was more accurate to a feather shape. So if you want to take your time to figure out what shape you like, then before you add water and paint, you can do an outline of the whole feather in pencil and then add your paint after. This second feather was probably my favourite as I like the light to dark gradient and I really loved the cool tones here. I wanted to give you three different colour options, one with more warm tones, second with cool tones and then the third feather with a mix of warm and cool colours. Comment down below which feather was your favourite and why. And don't forget to subscribe for weekly Saturday videos if you haven't already. My third feather had warm and cool tones, but since I used an orangey brown, I wasn't worried about the warm colours mixing with the cool colours. However, when adding more than one colour, try to dab on the colours and do light strokes, because moving around the paint too much may mean that your pretty colours will blend too much, mixing colours you perhaps didn't want. So add on the colours gently so they can stand apart from each other. Once the first layer of my first feather was done, I added purple hairs to make the feather stripy. 
I didn't think too much about the colours, I just thought pink and purple look good together and since I'm layering the colours, a purple will still look purple even with a pink base colour, so I went with it. But after I painted this, I realised that it was giving me 1951 Cheshire Cat vibes, which wasn't what I was going for but ended up with. This was fine, but then I thought it looked more like a cat's tail rather than a feather. So to learn from my mistake, you can do a quick practice round to see if you are happy with the colours and the pattern. Overall, I am quite happy with my second and third feathers, so I didn't feel the need to do another round, and plus you can learn from my mistakes, so it's a win-win. So I added a few dots at the bottom of my second feather and to give the feather more texture, I gently added lines on the vein, which is like the body of the feather. When painting these lines, I used my thinnest size 3 round brush and keeping my strokes quite light and faint and following the curve and flow of the feather when making these curved lines that will suggest the many lines of the feather. When choosing what colour to paint these lines, I chose the darkest colour that I used to paint that individual feather, so it gives contrast and can be seen. Then I added a background. This is optional. You can use this video to see if you prefer your feather to have a bare page as a background or a loose one like me. So to do the background, I loosely wet the area around the feathers with clean water. You can do this in sections if you think that the water will dry. Make sure that your page is thoroughly wet but without any puddles. While the page is wet, I dab the colours I use for the individual leaves around that feather, only adding a little paint as I still want the feather to pop. And then I began unnecessarily fiddling with the first feather, thinking that it needed to have more spiky hairs, and redoing it on the left side. So just ignore that, and that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video, and subscribe for weekly Saturday videos where I paint animals, flowers, landscapes, as well as other watercolour and drawing related videos. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.